this thing on? <laughs> I won't use that. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. Fernando? Welcome to the show. Perfect. Today we have what I like to call, well, I don't have a name for it, but it's cool because it's what we used to do a lot of, and it's nice to just get back to doing something simple like this. We've been doing a lot of more complex things, DSPs and all that fun stuff. This one is, this, this one is, it's almost like super simple, right? Uh, okay, yeah. Let's go with that. This is what we used to do a lot of before the DSP became all the rage and everyone wanted DSPs and processors <clears> and <throat> right. three-way and active and ah, What is it that we're doing? Let's get to that. So what we have up front is gonna be a nice Sony in-dash CD player with Bluetooth. No screen, no, just nice CD player. We're gonna do a four channel amp, and that's gonna power the speakers. Oh my gosh, I know, right? Then we're gonna do four, either six and a halfs or five by sevens, we don't know yet. Yep. It's a Ford Fusion, so we'll get these off. He went out and bought these. The car didn't come with the factory sail fin tweeters, so he found them online and picked up a set so that we can go ahead and add in a set of tweeters. I strongly recommend doing this if your car doesn't have tweeters and your car is capable of having them, you just need to buy a plastic panel to do it. It even came with the factory tweeters. How cool is that? That's all we're doing. I know. That's it? That's it. All done. All, all right. done. On to the next yeah. guy. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and get started with this, talk about the parts we're gonna need, talk about getting the door panels on, you know what we're gonna do. So let's get to us, you ready Fernando? Ready. Let's go. No matter what system we're putting in a car, there's a certain amount of time that we spend on the car figuring out where everything needs to go. That's one of the things we're gonna concentrate in this video is kind of just going through the motions of what we have to do, where things have to go. Even though it's not the most complex of installs, there's still a lot of thought that goes into it. So for example, gone ahead and popped the hood, and we wanna figure out what side of the car the battery's on. Believe it or not, that's important for one, power wire routing. If it's on the passenger side and we are going to mount the amp so we're coming up the passenger side, the first thing we need to do is figure out can we get through the firewall on the passenger side? Sometimes because of the air conditioner it's nearly impossible and it's not worth it. In which case we'll go to the driver's side. Now there again if the battery's on the driver's side usually it's easier to get through the firewall on the driver's side. Usually. There's an exception for everything. So in this case the battery is on the driver's side. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and try to figure out how to get through the firewall first. And that's before we even start on all the other stuff. We have to get an idea of where it goes. Secondly, we have to figure out where we're gonna put this amplifier. Is it gonna fit underneath the seat? If not, will it fit underneath the passenger seat? If it's not gonna fit there, where back here is it gonna go? Is it gonna mount here to this convenient flat side panel? Is there room underneath the tire here? So we spend a certain amount of time at the beginning of every install figuring that out. Let's figure it out. So Fernando's done some investigation on whether or not we can fit it underneath the seats. They both seats basically look the same. He's got this really deep floor mat. There's all this wiring here up underneath the seat. So the amplifier, it's just not gonna fit here comfortably. So into the trunk, it's gonna go. So what we're gonna end up doing is building a panel and mounting the amplifier here on this flat surface out of the way. So that's the plan for that. Next, we, what we wanna do is go ahead and get this driver's front door off here and figure out if it's a six and a half or five by seven. The customer feels that it's a six and a half. Paul feels it's a five by seven. I personally don't care. I'm gonna put the size in that, that fits and we're gonna move on from there. So enjoy Fernando as he shows you how to take this door panel off. So like we always say, just go around the door panel just to find where the screws are. And this one, and the lock, and the handle, it's it's a cap. Be careful, pop it out. Has a Torx, and the door where the switches are, it's a rubber mat, take it out. It looks like a seven millimeter. T20, we got one on the bottom and one on the side. Now you can grab your panel tool. And door panel is out. 
So now that the door panel's off, we can clearly see that Paul was right in this bed and that it is a five by seven. So for this install, because it is a five by seven, we will not be going with the CS six and a half. Instead, we'll be going with the CSC 68s, which will fit because it is a five by seven slash six by eight. So let's go ahead and open these things up and take a look at them because this is the latest version of Kicker's speaker. They've redesigned them. Naturally, every year when a speaker manufacturer comes out with a new design, it's always to just push that speaker capabilities a little bit further than they have in the past. Manufacturing costs change, products that are used in the manufacturing of the speakers change, things get cheaper, some things get more expensive. So they're always readdressing to try to improve the sound of speakers. Everyone does it. And in this case, for Kicker, they went ahead and changed the tweeter in these and updated them. You can tell the difference between the two is the old tweeter was silver and this new one is this gold color to match the whole color scheme of the CS line. Now, one of the things, Kicker really takes depth as an issue. They wanna make sure that their speakers will fit in all applications, meaning they don't wanna come out with something that has this huge basket because that limits the amount of vehicles it can go in. They always come out with a basket that is a little bit shallower and more narrow, and they're real conscious about how these things go in so that this will go into every Ford or five by seven application. But that follows true for the whole line. So whether it's a six and a half, a five and a quarter, a six by nine. So if you're worried about a speaker fitting, these are good for that. As far as the makeup of the speaker, it has a foam style surround. It has a plastic mica style cone, metal tweeter, decent size magnet. It is a four ohm speaker. It has a texture coated basket. Let's go ahead and hand this over to Fernando so we can get it in the car. Make sure you foam the basket so it doesn't rattle. It, because we're gonna run a tweeter, we're gonna install a pigtail from the mid range all the way to the top. So one of the things that we're doing in this is taking out this sail fin, the factory one here, and we're gonna replace it with those cool ones that we showed you. So let's head over to the bench and take a look at how we plan on doing that. So they call this a sail panel because it, well, looks like a sail. This is the replacement for it from the factory, very similar. The reason why you just don't cut into these, which you can, that's entirely up to you, is as you'll notice, it's not entirely flat. So what you end up with is you drill a hole here, but then on the sides here, if you're one of those really picky people, you'll see where the tweet doesn't fall in so you have a little tiny gap here that you don't have on the back side for some people that's a big deal so they buy these now the factory just uses two screws here and here to hold the tweeter in and then what we have behind it is a fairly decent sized hole for an aftermarket tweeter to go in now what we're gonna have to do is fabricate some kind of a bracket if we can't remove the tweeter off of the factory bracket but we'll take a look at that in a minute let's go ahead and open up the tweeters that we're putting in and take a look at those so for this we will We'll be using the CST20s. Now naturally they come with an instruction sheet that gives you the power rating on them. This is a three quarter inch titanium tweeter with a four ohm impedance and 100 watts of power handling at max. Normal power handling is 50 watts and it's got a 92 dB of efficiency. Frequency response is between 4,500 to 21,000 Hertz. Oh, they give you a cute little how to run wire through the boot. Now one thing I like about the Kicker tweeters is they really think about mounting and they give you a ton of different different options as far as mounting goes. So let's open this thing up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. See, there's lots of parts for mounting the tweeter. So you have that angle. So in this case, if you were to cut into the factory, as you can see here, see how you can see my finger, that gap? It's gonna be there because this is not flat. So that's why he said, I don't wanna cut into this, I'll just buy the right thing. But they have two little angle mounts so you can angle the tweeter if you are mounting it on a flat surface. Then they have one that is a little bit steeper. So you can actually combine these two because there's four of them. You can twist them or stack them or turn them upside down and you can get all different mounting angles for it if you're externally mounting them and you really want to dial in that angle mount for the tweeter. Then you have the screw in for it which is fairly long so it's designed to go all the way through it and that will screw on to the back of the tweeter itself. So it actually comes with two different screw-ons 
the short half inch version and the longer one inch version. And then there's also a flush panel that goes around the edge of the tweeter and then a scan mount angle adapter too. There's a ton of different pieces, but what makes it mm, just icing on the cake, this guy right here, there's actually a threaded insert in the back so that you can screw in your bracket. A lot of brackets, the tweeter just screws into them. It just makes installation that much easier when you're doing this. So for example, we could easily just make a bridge that goes across this and then screw the tweeter into the center of it here and we'd be done, which is probably what we're gonna end up doing. This is the crossover for the tweeter. All right, so let's just get all this stuff out of the way and we'll figure out how we're gonna mount this. Now looking closely at the tweeter itself, the whole opening, like this looks like it will come off of here if I go ahead and remove this epoxy that they have on it, but the whole opening itself doesn't look like it's going to fit this tweeter. So I would have to thin out the wall, which honestly is probably not worth the amount of time it's gonna take to do that, where I could easily just make a bracket that goes across these two points here and mount the tweeter right where I want it in the center there. And what we'll use to do that is a piece of 16th inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a three quarter inch piece of 16th inch ABS and we'll go ahead and get this tweeter mounted in. So I went over to the table saw and I cut up a little three quarter inch piece of eighth inch ABS. Now ABS is extremely rigid. You could also use Centra for this, which is the blown PVC. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and heat this up. And for that, we are gonna put on some gloves because this is gonna get hot. And the reason why we have to heat it up is because there needs to be a little S-bend here at the front because it sits lower than the back. Now you can get this stuff pretty flexible. Now all we wanna do is come back in here, thread it through the tweeter, tweeter where we want it. Now the hotter you get this stuff, the more time you'll have to play with it. And then use all your fingers to kind of mash it into the shape that you want it to copy. So make sure your tweeter is sitting where it's gonna be sitting, and then just kind of rub the plastic, getting it to bend. And you're gonna have to hold it there for a couple minutes. That's why we put the gloves on, because it burns your fingers otherwise. Now now it's gonna get close. As you can see this kind of gives us the shape we're looking for. It's, it's not perfect, it's not a straight 90, but we're in the, the ballpark of where we wanna be. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this up a little bit more and we're gonna just tweak this form. You don't wanna get it as hot as you had it the first time because really all you need to do is get in there and manipulate it a little bit. Now the one thing we wanna do is on this side right here, it has a slight curve to it that we need to subtract from our mount. And also, it is a little thinner. There are these little nubs right here. So we'll go ahead and remove those because they're in the way. And now we have our mount. So now all we have to do is go ahead and drill our holes, which we can line it up with our factory tweeter to do that, as well as drill our hole for this. And we can go ahead and screw it in place. To do as much manipulation as you need on the bracket, we went ahead and eyed this out a little bit more, made it wider so that we'd have a little left and right shift so that we could get that tweeter perfectly over the center. There we go. We've got it mounted in there nice. I'm gonna go ahead and hand this over to Fernando. He'll go ahead and finish dressing up the wire and get it into the car. And we'll move on to the second one because the joy of doing stuff like this is there's always two. So through the magic of video editing, you guys just saw me hand Fernando the tweeter and he's already got it in the car. I know, right? Let's take a look and see what it looks like. Now we've gone ahead and we've changed the way we do tweeters a little bit. Like naturally, you always evolve and come up with better ways of doing things. In the past, we would use bullet connectors, which we're very fond of. We, we like them a lot. It allows us to make a removable, easy to install product. So first thing, we went ahead and got it a five by seven mounted in the door like you saw. We were able to use the fact factory screws. Using the factory screws can be sketchy on some installations because of the way that this portion of the speaker is made. Sometimes factory screws have really big heads and it's not a good idea to use them because it will either break this, cut into it, it won't sit flush, the holes don't line up. So don't feel like you have to use these. So we've gone ahead and zip tied in the crossover. It is hiding right here where it will stay nice and dry. We've taped up over both ends also to keep any dirt and debris 
debris out of it. Although this door panel is pretty sealed and clean, I don't think it would have been an issue. Better to be safe than sorry. And then up here at the top, we have this, which is our new tweeter clip. So it is a male and female end that we can simply plug in our tweeter to. And that makes servicing it fairly simple. So we've gone ahead and soldered it into our tweeter. Now all we need to do is snap the tweeter up in place. And if for some reason they ever need to pull it off to get to that clip behind there to replace the mirror or whatever, there's a clip that allows the dealer to easily do it. This door is done, let's move to the next one. So the rear door is gonna be the same. We're gonna find the screws first. So like you guys saw, I already put my foam in the back of the basket, screwed the, the speaker back together, and we done. Mm -hmm. 